Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to talk about work papers. At first there was month end review, now there's work papers. And if you're an accountant using QuickBooks Online, this would be a perfect look at one of the new features that come in called work papers. Now the idea of work papers is nice and simple. Take your file that you've created in QuickBooks or your clients created for you and make sure that it's absolutely perfect before you submit it for tax returns, corporation tax returns, set of accounts, whatever it needs to be. It's gonna be your tool to have a deep dive into the file itself and make sure you're confident with the figures that are there. So if you're looking to make sure your QuickBooks file is right, then stay tuned to this video. My name is Aaron Patrick, I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer by Intuit QuickBooks and also that QuickBooks chat. Now today we're going to have a deep dive into a new feature within QuickBooks called Work Papers. And Work Papers is designed to give you confidence as an accountant or bookkeeper to make sure that you are confident in the way that QuickBooks is presented. Are you confident that the bank account balances? Are you confident that all of the balance sheet items are correct? Are you confident that when you look at one profit and loss account versus previous year's profit and loss account is the variance what you expected? We're going to have a look now and see exactly what QuickBooks can do to make sure that you're confident in the figures that have been presented. Let's have a look. Okay, first of all, let's get ourselves into QuickBooks. Now, the first thing to know is where is work papers held? We have already know that month end review, which is something we looked at early on in the channel, is up here. And that works really well for us and we've been liking month end review. Well, we know month end review is over here. Currently, work papers is under accountants tools. Remember, accountants tools is for you as accountants only. So you'll only see this if you are an accountant. So you'll only see this if you're logged in as an accountant within QuickBooks. From the accountants tools, we have the normal ones we can imagine. And then at the bottom here is a new one called work papers. Now work papers is split into three main functions documents, review and adjust, grouping and statements. And the idea is that we go through each of those stages and we follow the timeline. The first stage document is all about gathering the information and evidence you need to make sure that you're happy or at least set the picture of what you think QuickBooks should be. And what I mean by that is the balances that you have in QuickBooks. So if you've got a loan outstanding or a bank account that you've got some money in there, or maybe you have a accrual or a prepayment that you've already figured out and you've already included in QuickBooks, then this is your way to put the evidence against it. So it's almost like a checklist. You have an option now to go down all of the different categories on your balance sheet and you can put different evidence against each one to confirm that it's great. But before you jump into that, let's just make sure we understand what's at the top here. So we've got the option to jump into our what tax year we're in. So we've got tax year 2020, 2019, and we can split them accordingly. We can decide if we want to do it on a accrual basis or cash basis. And in the top right hand corner, we have options to look at different tools. We can download all of the documents to a zip, which would be really useful if you want to make sure that it's kept away from QuickBooks, so recorded in your own system. We get to carry forward data from a previous year. So if you're moving from one year to the next, you can bring that forward. And then we can lock a period if we're then happy with it. Remember it says up here, accountants only view. So it's only QBO accountant that can see this. And then always remember about the feedback button. So straight away, we can go in there and we can apply some feedback. My feedback would be. Whenever I'm with you, I am all right. There's something about the way you make me feel. Now that I've put some feedback in, let's go and see what's actually here. So first of all, you have a breakdown of all of the information that's available to you. So you can add a new folder up here. So maybe you want to add a new folder that includes your general working papers, or you can do folders from template. So if you've already got a client that you've set up as a particular working paper you'd like to work to, you can then import them from a previous account. Now on to the bit that's really useful. So we have here a breakdown of all our different accounts. And what we have the option at the right hand side is to add an attachment or add a link. And we can even download the documents that are there. So 
So if I need to add an attachment, I click on add attachment. I find a document that's going to be perfect for it. Press open. And that's going to process it. And the idea here is I now have a document here that in theory relates to what this transaction is going to be. So I'm putting proof against what this transaction is. I may have a link though. So maybe it's that I want to put a link to it. So I put an add, add a link. My link name could be proof of balance. And then I would put a URL in there. My rates and allowance as an example. Hello, future editing Aaron here. Just remember that trick that we learned from month end reviews when it comes to URL. So if you remember, if we go to reports, reports, and custom reports and open up a custom report. This URL up here is what you can refer back to. So imagine, I don't know, this was a cash receipt for us or a cash account for us. And then if I went to accountant toolbox, I went to work papers. And I was just going to use that report as my proof. Then all I would need to do is go to add, add link, put that link in that we've just copied and we'll call it cash report, save. What that means is that every time I want to bring back that report at any point, I literally go into cash in hand, click on cash report, and it brings up that report. Now you can use that with a new tagging solution. There's lots of ways in which that URL that we're going to, doesn't just have to be a website, but it could be a Google doc, it could be anything that you've got hosted somewhere. So it could be something you've got on your OneDrive, Dropbox or something like that or it could be something that's living inside QuickBooks itself. Either way, that URL feature is really going to be useful to you. Back to the main video. And what this does now is it gives me a chance to click on that button and I can go straight there if I need to. So my idea would be that under this documents option here is I'm almost using this as a blind approach. What I mean by that is as accountants, our role is to make sure that we're happy that the figures that we're submitting either for a tax return or VAT return or account, whatever it's going to be, that they're accurate. And one of the ways we can do that is by basically, quote unquote, painting a picture of what we believe the balance sheet should be as at the period end. So in this case, what I would use this document area for is to go through and try and systematically put through what those figures are. So I would be going, before I've even looked at QuickBooks and what it is at the moment, I would be going through these transactions now and trying to paint a picture in my mind or put it onto QuickBooks in the document section as to what the balances should be. So what my bank balance is, my cash balance, and everything else that's in between. And then the idea would be for me to utilize that data, have a look at that, have a go at trying to put that information into QuickBooks. And effectively, before I've even looked at QuickBooks, I then should know what my balance sheet should look like. And my next stage would be to compare the two. Now, you saw me putting in some feedback and putting feedback in there. The feedback I would be looking to put in at this point is that when we apply a, a transaction or we put a document into that document section, we should then be putting in the value of that document. That means that when we compare it in the next tab, we know that our document relates to say 10,000 pound, and then we can then see if that compares favorably against what's already in QuickBooks. And we can see if there's a difference or if there's an adjustment that needs to make or whatever we need to do. But the idea is at this stage is we're defining what we think it should be. We compare it to QuickBooks and then we see if there's any difference or variances we need to be aware of. Let's have a look how that works. Okay, so I go through and put in my documents in here and I'm basically putting together a nice breakdown of what I would need to do. And I would go through each one of these and make sure I'm comfortable that everything is in place as it needs to be. Now for me, I'd be concentrating really on the balance sheet items and I'd be making sure my balance sheet items were absolutely spot on. Okay, I've done the document section and I've, like I said, I've painted my picture of what I believe that balance sheet should look like. Let's go to review and adjust. So from a review and adjust point of view, I can now go through each of these sections and I can put a tick next to them when I'm confident that they're right. So it's given me option to see the changes. So I've got what it was in 2020, what it was in 19. And if I need to, I can make amendments here. So maybe the 2019 stuff just really isn't useful to me. I can take a tick out and I can get rid of it if I need to. 
I can then go through and my other options is I can export it to Excel just to see if I'm happy with everything that's there. Now, my options when I go down each one is I can mark as reviewed and that will tick the item saying that I'm happy that those are correct. I can go through marking again, but if I've got an attachment to them, I can see the attachment against it. On the right hand side though is the option for me to make adjustment or make note or even manage attachment. So at this point I might feel that there may be another attachment I haven't considered and I can bring it in here instead of having to go back to documents. Adding notes and making adjustments though are quite interesting. So let's look at this cash at hand. I've got £995 negative just here. Well clearly I can't have a negative figure. I was expecting zero so I know there's definitely an adjustment. So I would add a note first and say expected balance of zero. Save. That's me explaining that I was expecting to see zero here of £995. If I make an adjustment though, it's going to bring up my adjusting date. It's going to bring up everything that I need to do. I'm just going to change that journal to nil. So I bring up my cash on hand. I debit 995 and then I'd put the difference to wherever I'm putting the difference to. Key up here though is there's a tick box adjusting journal entry and I still have the same functionality of any other journal and I can put my attachment down here. Save and close. Now the key thing is that because I've made an adjustment here notice how at the moment the adjusting entry is still nil. The reason for that is because at the top I've had one change since the, today's date and I can view the changes or accept changes. And this will be really useful. Imagine you've got a team of people working for you and you've got people who are making the adjustments at a more junior level and then you want to make sure from a more senior level that they're correct. That's why this works really well. So you can have all of them being drafted out uh, purposely and then you can go back here and you can adjust them if you need to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to accept those changes. And when they're accepted, that's when you can see the adjustments have been put in. And our new balance is shown here. So it's a nice little audit trail of what was originally happened and what we've made adjustments against. And I can then go through and tick the ones that I'm happy with as I'm going along. Again, I can put the notes in if I need to or, or add attachments as I go through. If I export this in an Excel file, it'll look like this. It will tell you who's reviewed it. It will say what balance sheet, what the figure was before and any adjustments, any notes that have been made and any attachments or URL links that I could work from. This to me is a really good file that I think will be really useful to make sure that you can review everything and keep a copy of all the adjustments that have been made. It's a great audit trail. Okay, what's next? Grouping and statements. So the idea here is that you're now happy with the review and adjust and now you're ready to look at your grouping statements. Now one of the key things about this is that you get to go through and make some adjustments that you need to. So you can put this into any type of group. So you can create new groups, you can move them around. So maybe you're not happy with the fact that in the cash at bank I've got say the director's loan account sat there because I like to use that as account. Well, I get to move this now and I get to place this wherever I need to. So for example, it might want to be that this director's loan account needs to be under current liabilities. I just drop it and move it there. So okay, there's a new group called director's loan account and then I can move them into there. And what that means is when I export this final finished version, when I'm happy with it, export to Excel. And the final result is that I have uh, with my logo on, notice to reader, I've got my balance sheet sat there, my income statement, and any lead sheet items that I might need to worry about as well. So the idea is they look more like a statutory set of accounts. And that's gonna be really useful because that can give you the opportunity to be able to go in and be able to set everything up nicely. So you may have to, if you've got more kind of complex accounts you need to do, maybe charities, maybe solicitor accounts, or something along those lines, you're gonna have an opportunity now to really fine tune how those accounts look like. And finally, at the very end, you can export and download directly to a zip. And that means that in here, I have a breakdown of everything I need. All my attachments I may have done, any financial statements I've put together, all in one really handy download.
And there we have it, a look into QuickBooks working papers. It's a great start and something I think is going to be a really helpful addition to QuickBooks itself. It's that ability for us to be able to take confidence in those figures. And more and more that's becoming really, really important to how we're going. And also we can see that there is opportunities there to make sure that we're really confident in we're really confident in the working papers that have been generated and we can use this as an opportunity to really go and put stuff in there. What it means for us is that it gives us an opportunity to go in and fine tune this and make this so we can make it our own. So at our practice we're going to be making sure that we keep standardised documents that we'll be able to upload to each and every client and it means that then we don't have to resort to say Excel to do our working papers going forward. As much as possible we want to keep everything in to QuickBooks ecosystem as we can. That way we can be more efficient, that way we can be quicker at putting elements in and overall means that we could, should be able to be more accurate with the work that we do. What do you think to the working papers? Are there any adjustments you would like to see? I'm definitely putting forward as much feedback as I can to really fine tune this product. I think it's a great addition to QuickBooks and I'm really looking forward to using it going forward. But let me know below if there's any adjustments you would like to make and if there's any feedback you've already put forward. My name's been Aaron Patrick. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video and to the channel. That way we can make sure that we cover all the information that's important to you. As always, it's been a pleasure and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him now, 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 now My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description. But it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.